We'll now move into round two. Judges have recorded and submitted scores for each of the recitations in round one, and those will be added up for that round and the next two rounds to determine our state champion. You may notice that there are people busily picking up ballots from the judges in between poems. They're working on tabulating scores as we go. So you're about to hear the students perform the second poem of their choice. Judges, are you ready? Am I giving you enough time in between? I know it's rushed, but somebody just give me a, the evil eye if I'm rushing in too much. So I'm not a very good judge of that. Okay, well then, students, I think we should start round two. Rehearsal is an important part of this endeavor. Students work individually, get coaching from teachers, and perform in classes in their schools in preparation for local, regional, state, and national contests. Sarah indicates she was able to get input from many different teachers and individuals through her process of getting here to state. And she says she's glad for the opportunity to work with many interesting people along the way. From Rockbridge High School, this is Sarah Ashbach. Vigil Strange I Kept on the Field One Night by Walt Whitman. Vigil Strange I Kept on the Field One Night When You my son and my comrade dropped at my side that day. One look I but gave which your dear eyes returned with a look I shall never forget. One touch of your hand to mine, oh boy, reached up as you lay on the ground. Then onward I sped in the battle, the even contested battle, till late in the night Relieved to the place at last, again I made my way. Found you in death so cold, dear comrade. Found your body, sun of responding kisses. Never again on earth responding. Bared your face in the starlight. Curious the scene. Cool blue, the moderate night wind. Long there and then, in vigil I stood. Dimly around me, the battlefield spreading. Vigil wondrous and vigil sweet, there in the fragrant, silent night. But not a tear fell, not even a long-drawn sigh. Long, long I gazed, then on the earth, partially reclining, sat by your side, leaning my chin in my hands, passing sweet hours, immortal and mystic hours, with you, dearest comrade. Not a tear, not a word, vigil of silence. Love and death, vigil for you, my son and my soldier. As onward silently, stars aloft, eastward new ones upward stole. Vigil final for you, brave boy. I, I could not save you, swift was your death. I faithfully loved you and cared for you living. I think we shall surely meet again. Till at latest lingering of the night, indeed just as the dawn appeared, my comrade I wrapped in his blanket, enveloped well his form, folded the blanket well, tucking it carefully overhead and carefully under feet, and there and then, and bathed by the rising sun, my son, in his grave, in his rude dug grave, I deposited, ending my vigil strange with that, vigil of night and battlefield dim, 
Vigil for boy of responding kisses. Never again on earth responding. Vigil for comrade swiftly slain. Vigil I never forget. How as day brightened, I rose from the chill ground and folded my soldier well in his blanket and buried him where he fell. For the state and national finals, students are required to recite at least one poem written before the 20th century and one that is 25 lines or fewer. In some cases, one poem can satisfy both of those requirements. Sierra, like all of the students here, chose from the contest anthology and determined the order of her selections for recitation. Inevitably, teachers, classmates, friends, and family members gain exposure to old familiar as well as brand new poems as a result of this process too. From Oak Park High School, here is Sierra Shepherd. Famous by Naomi Shahab Nye. The river is famous to the fish. The loud voice is famous to silence, which knew it would inherit the earth before anybody said so. The cat sleeping on the fence is famous to the birds watching him from the birdhouse. The tear is famous briefly to the cheek. The idea you carry close to your bosom is famous to your bosom. The boot is famous to the earth, more famous than the dress shoe, which is famous only to floors. The bent photograph is famous to the one who carries it, and not at all famous to the one who is pictured. I want to be famous to shuffling men who smile while crossing streets, sticky children in grocery lines, famous as the one who smiled back. I want to be famous in the way a pulley is famous, or a buttonhole. Not because it did anything spectacular, but because it never forgot what it could do. I am the master of my fate, the captain of my soul. You probably recognize that line from British poet William Ernst Henley. Famous American poet Maya Angelou says that she gets real inspiration from that quote and says we can use poetry as a means of introspection. I'm guessing Alyssa, our next competitor, would agree. As she says, she's attracted to poems for the powerful messages they contain. As Maya Angelou says, through poetry, there is healing. In the worst of times, you can see the possibility of light. From Notre Dame de Sion High School, Alyssa Moncure. Solitude by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Laugh and the world laughs with you. Weep and you weep alone. For the sad old earth must borrow its mirth, but has trouble enough of its own. Sing and the hills will answer. Sigh, it is lost on the air. The echoes bound to a joyful sound, but shrink from voicing care. Rejoice and men will seek you. Grieve and they turn and go. They want full measure of all your pleasure, but they do not need your woe. Be glad and your friends are many. Be sad and you lose them all. There are none to decline your nectared wine. But alone, you must drink life's gall. Feast and your halls are crowded. Fast and the world goes by. Succeed and give and it helps you live. 
but no man can help you die. There is room in the halls of pleasure for a large and lordly train, but one by one we must all file on through the narrow aisles of pain. Our next recitation is from a student who's a true lover of words and language. She reports, when I'm older, my biggest dream is to become a writer. I've wanted to write ever since I was a little girl. Allie says, I love to read, and it would be the coolest thing to have someone read a book I have written and get the same feeling I get when I read books. There's no reason that won't happen. A junior from Troy Buchanan High School, this is Allie Walker. On the Death of Anne Bronte by Charlotte Bronte. There's little joy in life for me, and little terror in the grave. I've lived the parting hour to see of one I would have died to save. Calmly to watch the failing breath Wishing each sigh might be the last. Longing to see the shade of death or those beloved features cast. The cloud, the stillness that must part the darling of my life from me. And then to thank God from my heart, to thank him well and fervently. Although I knew that we had lost the hope and glory of our life, and now benighted, tempest tossed, must bear alone the weary strife. Thank you. Although the scholarship money, a free trip, and books for your school are all great, this contest is successful in even more meaningful ways. It's best summed up by a state champion at the national finals in a recent year who said, honestly, what I love so much and still cherish is the connection this brought me to the arts and those who value it. I learned the arts are perhaps the most noble and wonderful universal influence that humanity shares. Andrea is ready with her second poem. She's a 10th grader who enjoys sports, running, and swimming. She's a homeschool student. Here is Andrea Hall. When You're Old by William Butler Yeats. When you're old and gray and full of sleep and nodding by the fire, take down this book and slowly read and dream of the soft look your eyes had once and of their shadows deep. How many loved your moments of glad grace and loved your beauty with love, false or true? But one man loved the pilgrim soul in you and loved the sorrows of your changing face. And bending down beside the glowing bars, murmur a little sadly how love fled and paced upon the mountains overhead and hid his face amid a crowd of stars. Thank you. In partnership with state agencies, this project challenges the perception that poetry is a marginal art by making it directly relevant to the American experience, helping poetry regain a central presence in our culture, and helping poets gain recognition for their work from a wide readership are among the specific aims of this project. As we see with Callie, these poems resonate through young people. It's obvious. And we are just the fortunate beneficiaries of that effort. Here again, from Arcadia Valley High School, Callie Lewis. Broken Promises by David Kirby. I have met them in dark alleys, limping and one-armed. I have seen them playing cards under a single light bulb and tried to join in, but they refused me rudely, knowing I would only let them win. I have seen them in the foyers of theaters, 
coming back late from the interval, long after the others have taken their seats. And in deserted shopping malls, late at night, peering at things they can never buy. And I have found them wandering in a wood where I too have wandered. This morning I caught one, small and stupid, too slow to get away. It was only a promise I had made to myself once and then forgot, but it screamed and kicked at me and ran to join the others who looked at me with reproach in their long, sad faces. When I drew near them, they scurried away, even though they will sleep in my yard tonight. I hate them for their ingratitude, I who have kept countless promises as dead now as Shakespeare's children. You bastards, I scream, you have to love me. I gave you life. Two years ago, when our next student competed in her school's Poetry Out Loud contest, she says, I stood on stage, hands locked at my sides, knees knocking and voice shaking. But I had been brave enough to get on stage and recite poetry. This gave me a boost of confidence that I needed to become a more outgoing person like I am now. Patricia says Poetry Out Loud helped her break out of her shell. Breaking out of her shell with her second poem, an 11th grader from Central High School, this is Patricia Flanagan. All This and More by Mary Carr. The devil's tour of hell did not include a factory line where molten lead spilled into mouths held wide. No electric drill spiraling screws into hands and feet, nor giant pliers to lower you into simmering vats. Instead, a circle of light opened on your stuffed armchair, whose chintz orchids did not boil and change and the devil adjusted your new spiked antenna almost delicately, with claws curled and lacquered black before he spread his leather wings to leap into the acid green sky. So your head became a TV hull, a gargoyle mirror, your doppelganger sloppy at the mouth and swollen at the joints enacted your days in sinuous, slow motion, your lines delivered with a mocking sneer. Sometimes the frame froze, reversed, began again. The red eyes of a friend you cursed, your girl child cowered behind the drapes, parents alive again and puzzled by this new form. That's why you clawed your way back to this life. This activity is good for students and teachers alike. A Missouri teacher reflected on the project saying, this brings poetry off the page in a beautiful way for my students and for me. This activity changes the climate in my classroom for the entire year. I've even memorized and recited a poem for my students too. And that, to borrow from a famous poem, has made all the difference. Our next performer, Thomas, participated in his school's contest last year and took a challenge from his fellow students to step out of his comfort zone this year. He's an 11th grader and will likely continue to raise the bar for himself next year. This is Thomas Fields from St. Louis University High School. The End of Science Fiction by Liesl Mueller. This is not fantasy. This is our life. We are the characters who have invaded the moon, who cannot stop their computers. We are the gods who can unmake the world in seven days. Both hands are stopped at noon. We are beginning to live forever in lightweight aluminum bodies with numbers stamped on our backs. We dial our words like music. We hear each other through water. 
The genre is dead. Invent something new. Invent a man and a woman naked in a garden. Invent a child that will save the world. A man who carries his father out of a burning city. Invent a spool of thread that leads a hero to safety. Invent an island where he abandons the woman who saved his life with no loss of sleep over his betrayal. Invent us as we were, before our bodies glittered and we stopped bleeding. Invent a shepherd who kills a giant, a girl who grows into a tree, a woman who refuses to turn her back on the past and is changed to salt, a boy who steals his brother's birthright and becomes the head of a nation. Invent real tears, hard love, slow-spoken, ancient words, difficult as a child's first steps across a room. Selecting three poems for a contest from an anthology of more than 600 works is something each of our contestants undoubtedly spent a lot of time <coughs> considering, getting advice on, and input on from others along the way. Essence is prepared with her third poem now. She says, all of my poems speak to me in different ways, and they all relate to each other in some way. Sometimes I almost get lost in them. And it's true. Sometimes you have to get lost to be found. From the Crossroads College Preparatory School, <coughs> here's Essence Imani. Enough by Suzanne Buffum. I am wearing dark glasses inside the house to match my dark mood. I have left all the sugar out of the pie. My rage is a kind of domestic rage. I learned it from my mother, who learned it from her mother before her, and so on. Surely the Greeks had a word for this. Now surely the Germans do. The more words a person knows to describe her private sufferings, the more distantly she can perceive them. I repeat the names of all the cities I've known and watch an ant drag its crooked shadow home. What does it mean? to love the life we've been given, to act well the part that's been cast for us. Wind, light, fire, time. A train whistles through the far hills. One day, I plan to be riding it. Our next competitor will be our last competitor in round two. She's an 11th grader who finds a distinct connection between music and poetry. She says she understands what Edgar Allan Poe meant when he said, poetry is the rhythmical creation of beauty in words. Berkeley has been a singer since she was very young, performing the words of lyricists publicly. She says poetry recitation has given her even more freedom to express the meaning she finds in her own rhythm. From, from Nearinx Hall High School, this is Berkeley Going. The Watchers by William Stanley Braithwaite. Two women 
on the lone wet strand. The winds out with a will to roam. The waves wage war on rocks and sand. And a ship is long due home. The sea sprays in the women's eyes. Hearts can writhe like the sea's wild foam. Lower descend the tempestuous skies, for the wind's out with a will to roam. O oh, daughter, thine eyes be better than mine. The waves ascend high as yonder dome. North or south is there never a sign. And a ship is long due home. They watched there all the long night through. The wind's out with a will to roam. Wind and rain and sorrow for two. And heaven on the long reach home. Thank you. This concludes our second round.